No fancy lines, no magic crossovers, and no gimmicks. Supply and demand trading is unlike any other trading strategy because of how simple it is. And it is the same method that has made me over $2 million as a full-time trader with proof. And after watching this video, you'll walk away with two things. One, you'll understand the basics of how to trade supply and demand. And two, you're gonna see real life examples of how I've used this and executed this to make money. Now, step one, understanding exactly what supply and demand trading is. And in short, it's areas of institutional buying and selling. Where is smart money and how can we join them? Now, rather than explain with words how to trade this, I'd rather show you on the chart. Now, as I said, the first step of supply and demand is understanding what it is. The second step is knowing how to locate it. Now, when locating supply and demand, it's super important to remember that we can find this on the five minute time frame and other small time frames, or we can find it on the macro time frame. I use both in my trading. Now, the critical part of supply and demand is remembering that the more simple we keep things, the better. As I've highlighted for you guys here, this is a perfect example of five minute demand turned to supply and now going to be turned back to demand. You see, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to identify where supply and demand works or where supply and demand is. The important part here is how to execute on it, and that's exactly what I'm going to show you throughout this video, and specifically with examples towards the end. Now, we see here as we zoom out that, and even further back than this, if we drag this over, this was an area where we touched, came up, touched, came up, touched, went back down, and now turned this demand into supply, which is another very important aspect of supply and demand is remembering that when demand is broken, oftentimes it flips to supply, and when supply is broken, oftentimes it flips to demand. We sometimes call these retests. Now in this specific example, we touch down, come back up, touch down, come back up. After breaking the structure, retest, reject, retest, reject. And now just today, as I am filming this video, we break through with no drawdown, no resistance, move on up. This will now be our demand going forward in an area where I will look to go long if we come down and my confirmations and criteria are met. Now let's go ahead and flip this to the daily time frame, where the exact same principles apply and work just on a bigger level. Now in front of us, we have the SPY daily chart. And the same principles that we just used to find supply and demand on the five minute will hold true and apply to the daily, the weekly, or even the monthly. Now when looking at the chart, the first thing I always wanna look for is areas where we touch more than three times. I want three daily touches of any area to even consider it a solid and accurate level of supply or demand. So we go ahead here, we look, we see a swing high in this area, a previous swing high. We see a swing high here, a lower high and a lower high. Now we notice no consistent touches, no consistent touches. However, when we come down here, we have one touch, two touch, we come up here again, a third touch. This gets my attention. So we go ahead and we draw this across. Let's get that drawn out. We look in the downside. Do we have any consistent areas of touches? Here we have a reversal, nothing, nothing. Here we touch once, come up, up, again, big touch, move up, nothing there. However, on this next set of candlesticks, right, in consolidation here, we see lots of touches here, a touch here a breakout here. So on this particular area, this would catch my attention as an area of supply. So we have multiple touches in a row. We don't have this fluctuation here. We have lots of consolidation. So we're gonna go ahead here and mark this out. Okay, we get that marked out. Again here, nothing much. Touch, blast off, touch, blast off. Now what do we notice from our first level here where we touch, touch, and then touch again. We come over, as we move into this zone here, we touch, break through, retest, as we spoke about earlier, move up, retest, move up, retest, try to move up, fail, retest, break, have some consolidation here. And finally, when we get over this up and down accordion action, we break through, test the top of this channel, and we never look back. Now, I'm not telling you guys to sit there and trade every breakout and retest, but how this can help you as a day trader is realizing when we break out of these zones, when we are at these zones, or we break below these zones, we can use this to help confirm our daily bias. Now let's go to a more recent example. You look here, and you can see we got a breakout here with a gap, come down and retest, touch, touch, multiple touches. So after this third touch here, let's get to my attention again, and look at this key level, it's right around this 500. 
whole psych number, which we also want to look at. We're going to draw this area here. We look up more. Breakout candle here, test, break, test through. Again, no three touches, no supply and demand zone. We look up here, multiple touches and failures. Again, this is an all-time high, so you have to trade that just a little bit different. Nonetheless, still something to pay attention to. Draw this here. Let's mark this out together to the top of this wick. Now, in the middle here, we don't see a lot in terms of pure supply and demand. We see a few support and resistance levels, which we'll go over in just a little bit, but no true levels of supply and demand. So now looking at this forward thinking, we sold off a bit today, as you can see from this candle down, we moved on back up. We never retested this, this demand down here. So as we move back into the supply, after touching this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times, I know that these sellers are getting weaker. There's a high probability that when we come back up here and retest the zone, if we can break out of here, I'm gonna look for the break up. I'm gonna look for the break of this zone up, a retest back down. On this retest back down, that's where I wanna take the supply turn demand to potentially go long. Now, on the flip side, all right? On the flip side, if we're looking at this and you are a put-based trader, you're gonna look for an entry into this zone, a stop above the high of this zone, above the high of the supply zone, and you're gonna play this zone for puts back down. See, the reason I like supply and demand is because in these particular zones, it doesn't limit us to a specific level. You see, the, the issue I have with support and resistance is that it's oftentimes just a level, not a zone, which requires us to be much more perfect with our entry. And that can be a problem for a lot of us. I know it used to be a problem for me. I would try to pinpoint the exact entry with the exact scent, and more often than not, I was missing entries where I was too early or too late. I'd prefer entering in a zone. And you'll notice, whenever I enter my watch list every single day to my team, I always put it in a zone. I'm watching SPY 522 to 523 for puts or calls. I'm watching 530 to 531 for puts or calls. It's never 530.24, 530.87. Like, I don't find success in those exact pinpointed numbers because it puts too much pressure on accuracy. And our trades, have to have room to breathe. Now, speaking of allowing trades to have room to breathe, I wanna break down a real live trade that I took that made me several thousand dollars that I gave to my team before it happened this last week. Now, we go to the five minute chart on SPY. This is my bread and butter time frame for all things support and resistance and for day trading in general. And we, when we look at this chart specifically, I would like, to, like us to go back and reference the pre-market data on this particular day, Thursday, May 30th, for the trade that I took we caught the bottom here on the day and rode this up for a 50% plus trade on the S&P 500 trading options or, or a very nice trade on ES if you're a futures trader, which we teach both. Now, looking at this particular chart, okay? Before the day started, I told the team I wanted to watch for a 523 to a 522 area bounce on SPY. This was not random, my friends. There was no randomness in this trade. Now, you see here that on this particular day, we had a pre-market low of 522.9 to 523. That was one confirmation. I always want to use our pre-market low and pre-market high as areas of reference. But where I get this level and where, my, where I find my edge in this trade is our hourly chart. So we go over here and you can see, let's head on over to the recent days. You can see on this hourly chart, if we look back at this 522 to 523 area, we had many touches, touch, failure, touch, failure, with a touch failure with an impulse candle through that was never retested. So I go ahead, I draw this out. It's 522, 523, I draw this out. Now, I don't have this on watch these days. These days were too far away. We come back down. It gets my attention on this day, right? The beginning of the week, or the beginning of the prior week, excuse me. Come back up, no attention. As we head back down, this is my main level watch for the week. If we get down there, I'm going to try a calls entry. We finally get down. That particular day, we have a small gap up after downtrend movement um, the previous days, and that catches my eye too. Tells me, hey, the overall trend has been down. We might finally get to that area where we can get a relief bounce so I can execute on my demand zone. We go back to the five minute chart here. We know we have an hourly confirmation. We have a level there. We have another confirmation with a pre-market low. We are looking good for our level and trade to come together and work out for us. I have a phrase in trading that I like to say to myself every day, and it's no level, no trade. And I stick to that to AT. I don't have a level, a macro level typically on the hourly chart, I will not trade. If I don't have two confirmation, I will not trade. So on this, we have our pre-market low, 
we have our hourly confirmation. We come down, I give this trade some room to breathe. I don't get my full size. That's why I only made a few thousand dollars. Had I gotten my full size, it would have been well over a $10,000 day. A humble Honda day if you're, if you're an OG on this channel. Now, we come down, I get my ad around here, and we ride this up very nicely. These contracts end up going over 100%, though I sold for just over 50, which is okay with me. 50% a day keeps a lot of problems away. Now, what I want you to take from this is the lesson here of no confirmations, no trade, no level, no trade. I find my supply and demand typically on the hourly when I'm day trading, I'll use the daily as well for you know confirmation bias. Um, but typically speaking, I'll use the hourly chart. I'll confirm on the smaller time frames allow my trades room to breathe and move forward from there. This is quite possibly the most simple strategy in the world of stock trading. And that's why Team Bull has been so popular. We teach simplicity. I have a phrase that I practically live by and it's KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. The simpler you keep it, the more success you're gonna have. Now, my mission to all of you guys is to be the mentor that I never had when I first started. I wanna make trading simple. I wanna make trading as fun as possible. I want you guys to learn level up, become disciplined, and ultimately win. So if you guys wanna see more trading content just like this, make sure to tap in, hit that subscribe button on the channel, and stay tuned for more. Thank you guys for watching, Team Bull forever. What I'm saying is this, supply and demand trading was hard until I understood this.